Hi guys, um, welcome back to the Highland Valley Railway and another Coffee Break Tuesday. Mm. What I thought I would like to do today is talk to you a little bit about train control on the Highland Valley. Let me get that out of the way. Uh, I think most of you know, some of you know anyway, that I have opted not to go DCC. The reason being, I've been in the hobby for almost 60 years now and I never get rid of anything. When I've got it, I've got it. And so I've got 60 years worth of locomotives, almost 200 of them, um, that are not DCC. And to start converting now would be horrendously expensive for me. And it ain't broke, so why fix it? It works the way it is. Uh, so, analog control, and uh, let's take a look and see how it all works, shall we? So what I've done is I have gone with the uh, Atlas 2-cab control system, an established system, a system with, uh, as you can see, a wiring book and all kinds of products. Uh, you can notice there that I've got these things set up here. Um, everything's in here on how to work multiple cabs, uh, complicated layouts, and um, such things as reverse loops, turntables, all that. It's all in there complete. I have adapted it somewhat myself to, uh, to suit my own operations um, but basically it's it's what it is it's a common rail system so one rail on the entire layout is completely linked together with uh, metal rail joiners fish plates and that's continuous throughout the entire layout and the negative on each controller is wired into that into that track The rest of the layout, the opposite rail, I don't know if you can quite catch it there, no probably not, but there is an insulated rail joiner there, it breaks up that rail into different blocks. And the blocks are right here. And I have these things spread around the layout in different places, um, close to where the operations are. Uh, for those of you that missed my earlier video, all this wiring here is all temporary. Um, as I establish the uh, track in a permanent position, then I am uh, wiring correctly, uh, tucking everything away out of sight. But everything's temporary, uh, nothing's nailed down, um, but it works anyway. Um, so. I have five controllers on this layout, all working through a two controller system. To, to uh, achieve that, I have electrical brakes in uh, the control system. Uh, let's take another look at the layout itself here and see, just see uh, how this works. I'll prop this book back up in here again. So there's the basic layout, um, this area here and this area here is walkway and this is all bench work around here for the layout. Over here we have power pack number one and power pack number one is set up through these switches to be able to control every single track on the layout everywhere through that controller. Controller number two is located down at the other end of the layout. If we pop this in here. Controller one, where we're standing now, is here. Controller two is way down here, the other end of the layout. It can control all of these red areas. The only, the only part it cannot control is this here, which in actual fact uh, if I can get my 
hands in here it's this track and the whole industrial area down through here which is a lot of switching that is the um, that's the domain of power pack number three which is that one right there power pack number three and the blocks for that one are six blocks right here these two are not in use they can be off these block switches by the way are nothing more than single pole double through center off um, switches it's uh, a lot cheaper to buy them like this than it is to buy them individually back to train control okay so we've got uh, we're just talking number three well number three is the green area here it can control that power pack number four power pack number four controls the brown area right here now that starts on the layout right here with this line here it cannot control this one but it can control this one and all the way up that back line all the way up through and out there there is power pack number four sitting out there on the lift out section um, right there and it it has all that area down through the back and over there Power pack number five can operate the yellow section, along with, of course, power pack number one and power pack number two. So let's go have a look and see where that one is. So there we go, there's power pack number five, and it has the prairie branch line back here, all the way back down through there, the grain elevators in the in the backdrops or the back scenes uh, it has this area here all the way through here and coming back in through to the main layout it has those tracks there running up through into the coal mine so the coal mine can be operated by power pack one two or five main lines in fact anywhere except the industrial area can be operated by power pack one and two and uh yeah power pack three just has the the industrial area and power pack four has everything way off out there that's a brief overview and uh, if there are any specific questions about it, please ask in the comments. Um, I don't know what else to show you right now. Um, one of the things about this, it does allow you to run two trains on the same track just by careful switching of the blocks and location of the blocks. Um, but uh, yeah, no. It works great. So, yeah, any questions, please ask in the comments. Otherwise, have a great time. Enjoy your trains. Enjoy your coffee. Please comment, subscribe, like, please share. And we'll see you again next time for another Coffee Break Tuesday. Bye.